Now is the time to accelerate this transformation, particularly as we're talking about trust, because we live in a time where people in the United States are trusting people who are not trustworthy. And I think the focus that shifted from the, from the forum from day one to day two, when we moved from talking about building trust to being trustworthy was really pivotal in my thinking about this. Um, because the reason that people in the United States now are trusting people who are not trustworthy is that they don't have a relationship with the people who are trustworthy and they don't think that the people who are trustworthy and we are one of those groups um, respect them for who they are. And so I think there's a void that we, if we are wise about this, um, can fill. And so rather than let the external environment scare us away from tackling something like trust, I think it's exactly the right time. Um, an important thing though, I think for us to take home from is that trustworthiness is not about the truth. It's not about facts or expertise. In medicine, it's about the relationships, developing the types of relationships that can provide a healing space for our patients and for their communities. Um, and it requires competence, um, but it also requires another set of competencies and characteristics, communication, motivation, we'll talk about that in just a minute about some of the words we've been using, um, which are in many ways very abstract and very clinical and will not play to a broader um, audience. And I think we should be cautious of that. Importantly, and I think this was another epiphany for me in listening to all of our experts, including our patients and other colleagues, Trust in our patients is an essential component of trustworthiness in physicians. We cannot expect patients to trust us if we are not willing to trust them with their life experience of how um, their illness or their current state of health has arisen out of their, out of their in individual unique context. And trust actually cannot happen at the microsystem alone. It cannot be only the burden of the frontline health professionals to identify ways to be more trustworthy for patients and communities. The institutions in which we work have to develop new systems and structures that make it possible for us to develop the trusting relationships that we think are really important for our patients. So how, how are we gonna do this as a group of committed people who are working with the ABIM Foundation and, and really um, delighted that they chose this topic? Um, well, a lot of the messages came from the wonderful speakers um, throughout this, um, this conference, and I just wanna acknowledge the messages and frame them in um, the, the lens of transformational leadership. Transformational leaders always build learning coalitions, and Lisa Cooper and her um, really wonderful diagram, sorry about the blurriness of this, but I couldn't um, download the slides from the apps um, for this presentation about how to think about enhancing trust among socially at risk uh, population. First start by asking them what it is that they need um, and then go from there with solutions that actually address their primary needs. Um, transformational leaders experiment and learn. We love the compact between physicians and leadership drafted by the physicians um, pre presented by Michael yesterday. A really important thing for us to think about, would we be willing to let patients draft a compact for trustworthiness um, for us and let us respond to it rather than vice versa. They ask hard questions. Um, Jeremiah, um, amazingly great conversation yesterday. That whole patient panel was wonderful. Um, but these types of questions, are we serious, he asked, when we say we wanna address these issues. Do you hear me as somebody who is a spokesperson for this community or as somebody who is an individual patient who is struggling with one of the conditions that has health disparities? Does it matter to you what I have to say? Um, we have to confront this skepticism and this is where trust and skepticism may actually go hand in hand to think about what it is that we need to undo in terms of the relationships that have been poorly forged in the past with our minority communities. Tom's uh, presentation was great and his graph from Prescani I thought was really thoughtful as an example of the way transformational leaders can simplify complex problems and bring them down just to a couple of rules. Make sure your providers are competent, make sure your teams function effectively, and then make sure when people interact with patients, they're courteous, listen carefully, and express concern. We don't need thousands of metrics about how long it took someone to get into an exam room or what the wait time was. This is what we need, um, and we should be focusing on these areas, and simple messages will help us get this movement going. Um, Don's comment about sharing leadership is another example of what transformational leaders do. They don't care who actually gets the credit they look for the person who's got natural leadership and agency with that community. And, con and convening a community board of faith and other community leaders to build trust is a, is a brilliant move that should be replicated in cities across the country. 
Um, Patrick Conway, um, transformational leaders take a stand. Boy, that was a stand. Um, I don't know exactly what he quoted, but this was the message that I heard, that you know, your participation is optional, but if you don't participate, you're never gonna get a pay raise again. And I suspect that actually, sometimes we shy away from these bold statements, but it's probably worth thinking about. And then the, uh, we cannot underemphasize the importance that transformational leaders put in building systems that can protect vulnerable patients from fallible physicians. No matter what we establish as our goal and no matter how committed people are to being trustworthy, we will have problems on a day-to-day -day basis. Something will happen. And we should have systems that have our backs. And Lisa and uh, Richard Riggs' conversations about the work they've done both in the Rich Life Program and the California Rehab Institute have a lot of important um, information about how you create systems to sustain the ideas and the interventions that you have.